Since 1992, DW Fern Mic preamps, equalizers, and compressors have been used in some of the world's best studios and in private use in home studios around the world. This tutorial will help you get the most from your DW Fern products, learn what each control does, and see the best setup starting points for a variety of recording situations. Learn how to interface our products with the rest of your studio gear. Take a peek inside and see how our products are made. And learn from Doug Fern's experience in over 40 years in pro audio. One of the questions that I'm, I'm asked when people are interested in how the VT4 and the VT5 work is, is they say, well, how many bands is it? You know, they're used to console or rack mount or plug-in equalizers that have a certain number of bands. But when you're dealing with an equalizer like the VT4, VT5, it's a different philosophy. In a normal um, equalizer that, that most people are accustomed to, they'll have one band where they can either boost or cut, another band they can either boost or cut, and so on. In this design, it's a little bit different because we have some controls that boost and we have some controls that cut. And if we start from the left and move to the right, we move from low frequencies to high frequencies like you would on a piano. And the first band is called low cut. And this is used to reduce the level of the lowest frequencies. And you have four different frequencies you can choose from where to, where, where to introduce that cut. The next switch is a low boost. Similarly, as you turn it up, you increase the amount of boost at that particular frequency. And again, we have five different frequencies we can choose for that. The third control is called mid-cut. And this is used to reduce the intensity of mid-range frequencies. And you can see there are, are uh, five or six different bands where you can reduce that. The next one is called High Boost. This is the only control on the VT4, VT5 that actually has three controls involved. And again, you have your control where you can adjust the amount of boost. You have a control where you can adjust the amount of the, the frequency that you want to use. And you have a third control which adjusts the bandwidth or Q of the equalizer on that particular high frequency boost band. And then the last one is a high uh, cut switch, which you can choose one of four frequencies and cut those frequencies. There are two other controls on the VT4 and the VT5 that I should mention. One of them is the input level control. And you can see in the middle, it's set at zero. And that means that the level that goes in is exactly the same as the level that goes out. Now that's assuming that there's no equalization switched in on the unit. However, if you're using large amounts of boost, the output level may be too high for whatever's following the VT4, VT5, so you might want to back it down. And these are in very precise 3 dB um, increments here, minus 3, minus 6, minus 9. On the other hand, if you're cutting significantly and the level's dropped a lot, you can increase the gain by plus 3, plus 6, or plus 9. The majority of the time, you'll leave it on the zero position, um, but if you need to, you can adjust the gain. This control is actually a pad right on the input to the VT5, so it has no effect on the noise level. So if you need additional gain, you can definitely turn this up without changing the noise at all. The other control is the in-out switch, and this actually bypasses the equalizer circuitry so that if you want to compare what it sounds like with and without, it's easy enough to do. So it certainly gives you an opportunity to, to hear what it sounds like with the equalization and without it. The VT4 was the first equalizer we developed, and it is a single channel equalizer. It has one input and one output, obviously can be just used on, on one source. Uh, but we discovered that the majority of our customers were buying a pair of VT4s because they wanted to use them on the stereo mix bus or they were used in mastering facilities. So we developed the VT5, which is exactly the same. All the same frequencies, all the same range of the controls. 
Everything's the same except it's stereo. And this is true stereo equalizer, which means that one set of controls simultaneously adjusts both channels. And the two channels are constructed so that they track perfectly together. We say they'll track within a half a dB at any setting. In reality, very, it's very rare that anything is more than a tenth of a dB different between the two channels. So this is the advantage of the VT5. If you need rack space, if you're always going to be doing it in stereo, you can always, you know, set your controls on that and not have to worry about accidentally having the two channels have slightly different settings. But there's also some advantages to having a pair of VT4s instead. One of the advantages is that it allows you to use the channels independently. So that if you were to be tracking and you needed equalization for that, you could use your pair of VT4s independently on two different sources. Or if you have a multi-room uh, facility, you could put one VT4 in one room and v one VT4 in another room, but if you needed a stereo pair, you could bring them together in that room. So there's some advantages to it. Uh, other advantages um, for the VT pair of VT4s is that they generate half the amount of heat. Uh, because obviously a VT5 has twice as many tubes, twice as much circuitry in the same space. So it generates a little bit more heat. And in order to dissipate that heat and, and extend the lifetime of the, of the product, uh, which we predict is 50 years, um, there's a small fan. It's very quiet. You'll probably never notice it running, but there is a fan in that. The VT4, on the other hand, does not require that. So it's a little bit quieter in that sense. Um, there's some other theoretical advantages to a pair of VT4s uh, in terms of um, specifications, but in reality, uh, you know, I have my, my choice in my own recording. I could use a VT5 or a pair of VT4s, and generally I'll opt to use the VT5 just for the convenience factor. So whichever way you go, um, you're guaranteed the same kind of quality, and as far as the VT4s matching each other, if they're ordered as a pair, we check them out the same way we do with a VT5 and make sure that they track together. But that being said, we've had people that have um, bought a VT4 um, 10 years, 15 years ago, and then added another one more recently. They send back the first one to match with their a new one, and we find we don't have to do anything. They match perfectly right from the beginning. All our products are designed to last for a long time. This is in contrast to a lot of electronics today, which is going to be obsolete in a few years anyway, so there's no point in using quality parts that have a lifetime longer than that because the unit will not be useful after that. But we design our products to last forever, and we estimate that most of the things we've built will still be operating in 50 years. And we also make sure that our products are repairable in the future, so that if something does wear out eventually, that it can be replaced and the unit can, can stay in operation for a long, long time. In many situations with the VT4, the VT5, you'll find certain frequencies are very magical and just do a, uh, just exactly what you're looking for in the track. Um, this could apply to an individual track, but probably more so to an overall mix. And one of those magic frequencies is a 10 kilohertz boost. This has an effect of adding a very nice sheen to the sound, um, bringing out the clarity and uh, percussiveness of a track and so on without sounding harsh. It doesn't sound like you're boosting all that much. In many cases, it may take just two or maybe four dB of boost to achieve exactly what you want. But there may be other times when you'll end up boosting eight or 10 dB, which sounds like an extraordinary amount of boost at that frequency. But the reality is with the VT4 and the VT5 is that it, it can accept an extreme amount of equalization without sounding harsh or distorted or even really all that out of balance. Now, of course, you can always go too far and you have to be careful not to do that. But you shouldn't be afraid to use a lot of boost if it achieves the effect you're looking for. As far as the high frequency Q of the 
uh, of 10 kilohertz or any of the other high frequency boost frequencies, most often you'll end up on the broadest position, the 0 0.6 position. That seems to work best for the vast majority of material. However, if you have something particular on an individual track where you're trying to bring out some aspect of the high frequencies on that track, then you can use these narrower, these sharper positions, and it, it will give you um, a great deal more apparent boost. Now, 10, 10 kilohertz, I say, is a magic frequency on this equalizer, but in addition to that, you may find that the 8 or the 12 do exactly what you want. Those frequencies on this equalizer are um, probably, it's, it's one of its nicest features. But these other ones are available too, and they can be very useful in tracking. Some of these lower ones are excellent for snare drum and for electric guitar recording. The various highest position on there, the 16 kilohertz, is a, an air frequency, which a lot of times won't be really apparent in terms of an increase in high frequencies, but it'll just open up the track and give it a lot of air. You'll notice on the high cut frequencies that the highest one is 28K, 28 kilohertz. And you think, well, why in the world would you want that? Well, when the VT4 was originally designed, it was back in the days when the majority of recording was done 16-bit and at fairly low uh, sample rates, 44.1 or 48 kilohertz sample rates. And we found that a lot of times um, converters sounded much better by cutting out some of that um, very high frequency, really beyond the normal audio spectrum frequencies, which caused aliasing in the converters. And so we added this 28 kilohertz position, which you can use to cut uh, at those very high frequencies, and oftentimes it'll clean up the sound of it. Now, if you're recording with 96 kilohertz sampling or above, it's probably not going to be useful because, in that case, those frequencies are recorded accurately anyway. But at lower uh, sampling rates, it can be very useful. In the low frequency range, all these frequencies are useful. They're all valuable at one time or another for different types of material. On the mid-cut, if there's one that I always gravitate towards and end up using most of the time, it's the 400 hertz. That seems to be a frequency that just a little bit of um, reduction can often clean up a mix significantly. Uh, you have to be careful because it's easy to scoop out way too much of the mid-range, but as long as you use it very carefully, maybe only a couple of dB, it can provide a lot of clarity to the mix without affecting the overall frequency response. The lower frequencies of the mid-range are often useful in conjunction with a low frequency boost. So you can boost at 100 or even 140 and then cut a little bit at 200 and cause that boost to be uh, more focused downward than it is move, pushing into the mid-range. Um, the 300 can be useful there too. The higher ones are useful a lot of times to eliminate certain strange ringiness in snare drums or strange room sounds and so on. Um, those cuts can be useful at times. So that'll give you some sense of where to start with a VT5 or VT4 equalizers to achieve the sound you're looking for.